and so we'll now jump to another virtual session and I hope that uh, it will work this time with Jan Fiegel, uh, who is uh, a special envoy for the promotion of the freedom of religion or belief outside the EU. He will uh, discuss how to build a, a culture of human dignity. Uh, Dr. Feigl was nominated in 2016 by the European Commission as the first special envoy for promotion of freedom of religions of belief outside so the European Union and was formerly European Commissioner for Education, Training and Culture. Uh, and he was elected in, in 1992 as an MP to the National Council of the Slovak Republic, serving on his Foreign Affairs Committee and becoming a member of Slovakia's delegation to the Council of Europe. In 1998, he was appointed State Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and was also the representative of the Slovak government in the European Convention, which drafted the European Constitution. So, Dr. Feigl, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. We do. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Dzień dobry wszystkim. Pozdrawiam do Warszawy. Uh, I'm very sorry that I couldn't be with you in person because uh, a family issue prevented me from travel. But I'm grateful and honored to speak at this forum and I uh, want to express my gratitude to Ave Maria School of Law and uh, Cardinal uh, Wyszynski's University. Particularly, if I may, one sentence I would like to say, send my greetings to uh, Ligia Castaldi and Piotr Mazurkiewicz. Topic on uh, human dignity is fully in line and in, in the core of legacy uh, of John Paul II. And... Uh, I want to stress that this uh, notion should invite us for deepening and nurturing culture of human dignity, which may serve as a road to universal brotherhood and peace. Uh, and when I express these issues, it's not so much religious, but societal and even secular language. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we all share that peace is a fruit of justice. Uh, the core of justice today is based on the respect of fundamental human uh, rights of people, which means civil, political, economic, social, cultural. And the foundational principle of human rights is dignity. And in order to make our 21st century more humane time, we must return to the original meaning of key documents and definitions on this subject. Around the world, the interpretation and agenda on human rights uh, are hijacked today by various groups representing new ideologies or ethical relativism. We could hear from previous speakers a lot on this. Or they are refused and violated by totalitarian or autocratic regimes and by violent extremism. The world needs active protagonists of a culture of human dignity of all, which means protection and respect of human dignity, and for all, which means promotion and active support of human dignity. It is an important and noble task to defend the universality of fundamental human rights and the human dignity of all people. St. John Paul II insisted on respect of uh, human dignity in his teachings and in his life, in his words and in his deeds. Uh, following, uh, I want to mention three basic sources that articulate the priority of human dignity. Two are secular and one is faith document. The first one is the beginning of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights from 1948. Preamble starts with saying, various recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. And it goes on. And Article 1, Number one of the all over 30 articles says, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. 
they are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Very important and very clear words. Uh, then I want to quote one sentence from the European Union Charter of Fundamental Rights from 2000, as I served as the EU first ever special envoy for freedom of religion or belief. This charter recognized dignity as the first founding value of the Union out of four other, and, respect, and, and respects and protects dignity in the article number one and chapter number one. And then I have a, a quote from Vatican II, the, from the Second Vatican Council Declaration, Dignitatis Humanae, from December 1965. I quote, a sense of dignity of human person has been impressing itself more and more deeply on the consciousness of contemporary man. And the demand is increasingly made that men should act on their own judgment enjoying and making use of a responsible freedom, not driven by coercion, but motivated by a sense of duty. This is the first paragraph of the Declaration on Religious Freedom made by the Second Vatican Council. It speaks to all of us today, and I quote again, the Council further declares that the right to religious freedom has its foundation in the very dignity of the human person. We all know, ladies and gentlemen, how active and important role played Cardinal uh, Karol Wojtyla at the Council, and how active he was in implementation of the Council conclusions. It's seen by his actions, by his name even, adopted John Paul II. The Judeo-Christian biblical tradition, as expressed in the book of Genesis, states that mankind is created in the likeness and image of God, famous Imago Dei. This is the supreme source of human dignity. Christianity deepens this conviction through its belief that Jesus Christ, as Son of God, in his terrestrial life, became one of us. These acts uh, of divinization of human dignity invite us to respect the dignity of each human being and the whole creation as well. Respect of uh, human dignity is the meeting point for all religious humanists and secular humanists, if they are really humanists. The convergence of different traditions and conceptions leads from the definition of a common ground to the promotion of a common good. Dignity is the highest worthiness or highest richness that each person possesses and therefore transcends the whole material world. The value of a human person is not in what he has, but in what he is, a unique being with intellectual, spiritual, and material dimensions of life. Each human being is a person. Only a person can have rights and duties. And this is the Christian view of integral personalism, which uh, opposes totalitarian collectivism or liberal individualism. A person is not a matter, a thing, an animal or an object. Person is always a subject with reason, conscience and freedom. Dignity expresses the innate value of a person endowed by reason, free will, capability to procreate, and to build relations, build relations to other persons. A person has fundamental, inviolable, and inalienable rights and duties, which are implemented individually or in community with others. Ladies and gentlemen, human dignity is the foundational principle of all human rights. In dignity, we are all equal. In identity, we are all different. And I mean people of the past, people of present, and future people, billions of people. This is not a problem. This is the principle of creativity, as opposed to any copying or cloning. In humanity, the global family is one. Unity in diversity is a humanist ideal. 
unity in uniformity or unity and uniformity is a totalitarian ideal. Human dignity can be articulated in three dimensions, which are very critical for a positive change in the human rights climate. We can say it in nice English, me, the, we, I, you, and we, us. These three need to be brought together. The first one is me. Human dignity concerns me, my personhood, myself. My specificity is my uniqueness, in common with each and every person, past, present, future. As I said, billions of people. I am unique. And from this uniqueness, I draw my dignity and project my specificity. This personal uniqueness is something original that nobody, nobody can ever replicate or replace. I am a specific and a unique contribution to my fellow human beings. If my originality, authenticity, and uniqueness is not revealed and not fulfilled, it will be lost. My own dignity causes me to interpret the world, make choices, interact with others according to my own conscience, my reason, my convictions. And to do so, I need to exercise all my freedoms, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, freedom of action. Second is the human dignity is not limited to my own freedom. It includes the freedom of the other. It invites me to exercise tolerance, to define my limits in order to respect the other. This includes an imperative of equity and equality and therefore of justice. Human dignity is a responsibility that must be shouldered. If dignity gives rise to rights, it also implies duties and responsibilities. And in today's world, we don't like this part of dignity. We love duties, we love freedoms, but who cares about duties and responsibilities? These responsibilities are not fixed or static, but must be developed and exercised and maintained through time. And the last third one is we. In addition to, uh, to the previous, human dignity is not, not only an individual responsibility. Since I am a part of a community, family, uh, the dignity has also a collective, a social and societal dimension. Religious social responsibility in particular is that of seeking the common good. So we shouldn't defend only religious freedom, but also religious social responsibility. Second side of the same coin. For their part, religious actors need to contribute to the strengthening of social cohesion and justice in society. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a culture of human dignity actually is been built up on the recognition and observance of the triple importance of human dignity in politics. Human dignity is at the same time, first, the departure point or basis of public policy, the reason for, the second is the objective purpose of public policies, and the third one, it is criterion of adopted measures and utilized means. So and the dignity of human person represents a balance and interdependence of rights and duties, freedom and responsibility. So it actually express mature citizenship. The famous triangle the, the, of the Egalité, Fraternité, Liberté, brings justice and common good to society only when all three components are present and strong. A culture of dignity is promoted when the human dignity of all is duly respected and protected. Equal dignity gives each of us a place within one human family, one humanity. Therefore, spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood is our duty and right. It means to treat others as brothers and sisters and to be treated as brothers and sisters. 
The concept of dignity is basic to the reason and logic behind the universality of human rights. Dignity is the root and source of inalienable and undeniable rights of each person. The universality of human rights is implicit in the logical character of fundamental human rights. And fraternity is the fruit of this conviction. Dignity is the root and fraternity is the fruit of these roots. One equal dignity calls for one equal fraternity. And this represents one humanity and universality of humankind. Human dignity, universality of rights, and duty or privilege of fraternity are interrelated, indivisible, like roots, tree, and fruits. Without equal dignity, how could we speak about universality, the oneness of humankind, and the demands of fraternity? Equal dignity is a moral principle, and translation of this moral principle into legal and political principle is called equal citizenship. Very important understanding and principle for our living together in justice. Concept of human dignity entered global constitutional history in a small country, in Ireland, in 1937. But after the tragedy of World War II, we can find it in many modern constitutions, those of federal Germany and India, for example, but also in the UN Charter and, as I mentioned, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. To bear more and better fruits of this universal, more humane approach to our conflictual world, we must cultivate this notion, the understanding and promotion of human dignity of all and for all. We all need to nurture culture of human dignity. A culture of human dignity brings together one principle and two rules. It promotes Christian personalism and refuses the both individualism and collectivism as extremes. This culture respects in society the golden and silver ethical rules. As you know, and I will just shortly mention, the golden rule is do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. And the silver one, do not do unto others as you would not have them do unto you. Both are very ancient. Both were quoted by Jesus Christ in gospel. We should remember, and not only remember, but follow. Let me conclude by reflecting on the Declaration on Human Dignity for Everyone Everywhere, adopted in December 2018 in Punta del Este, Uruguay. I don't have right to, to share the picture, so I prepared this way. Um, by issuing the Punta del Este Declaration, signatories wish to respect and protect human dignity of every human person as its innate worth. And to make an even stronger and active commitment, they subscribe to human dignity for everyone everywhere. Dignity is described here, as I said, as a foundational principle, criterion, and key objective of human rights. There are hundreds of signatories of this uh, declaration. Uh, you can join scholars and experts uh, which subscribe to important 10 points on uh, human dignity and also spread, what I say, culture of human dignity uh, of all and for all. There is also a connection to my web if you want to communicate with me after this uh, presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, despite many achievements of the landmark post-World War II documents and institutions, we need a positive change in the human rights climate. The Punta del Este Declaration is an invitation to the global community for an enriching conversation about dignity for everyone everywhere and also an invitation to tap inspirational potential of the notion of human dignity. Economy and security are necessities like daily bread, and we even pray for daily bread. But culture gives sense to our living together, gives meaning to our relations. 
while economy and security are the roots, culture is the flowering. Speaking in time of war in Ukraine, Slovakia is a frontline country. I greet you from Bratislava, Slovakia. It is urgent time to do more and to do better for culture of human dignity. There are many commendable initiatives on peaceful coexistence. Change comes from words to deeds, to habits, as they form character, culture, and then destiny. A culture of human dignity for all is the opposite of intolerance. It stands against allies of evil, and these allies are pretty known and pretty visible. Indifference, ignorance, and fear. The 21st century can be an era of more hope, replacing the past century of ideologies, violence, wars, genocides, divisions. But we must stand up to our promise, never again will there be a genocide. Ludobuistvo po polsku. We must learn how to live together, not just to exist together, in diversity. I wish that Russians and their leader Putin speaks on human dignity. They would understand more what's going on, what they do. Special attention must be given to young people, working with youth, for youth, through youth, and finding a peaceful future for Middle East and Northern Africa region, for Ukraine and Eastern Europe, for Israeli-Palestinian conflict, for a democratic Pakistan and Nigeria, for peace and real development in the ACP, Asia, Caribbean, Pacific countries. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to, to finish by saying that respect for human dignity starts with three human personal freedom, freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, and freedom of religion. Homo rationalis, homo moralis, and homo religiosus is one integral person, not three, not separated, divided. My hope, my hope and commitment is for a renewed, strong commitment to human dignity culture in line with the spiritual legacy of John Paul II. And this way I want to thank you for your attention, for cooperation and support. All the best to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Figo.